you know, with college making it a lot harder for me to find time to watch movies whenever I want, oh, how dare college do that, I have to make sure if I have to choose one movie a week to watch, or, you know, a new movie at least, because, you know, movie class, uh, and review every week or two, you know, for videos, I better make sure it's a good movie. Too bad it was this movie, I chose this one, and it's not good. Okay, I could have had a better introduction than that if I am having to, you know, make sure I have enough time to do these kind of reviews. So yeah, this movie was bad. So, my best friend's exorcism came out and I watched it the day before October, so it could have been a good start for Halloween season, and, um... The massive amount of horror movies coming up this month, or next month, I don't know where I'm releasing this. Uh, I think it's October by the time this video will come out. Anyways, it's a movie that's confused on what it wants to be, so, you know, perfect start. It's called My Best Friend's Exorcism. I didn't think it would be that hard to figure out what kind of movie it wants to be, and I watched this on Amazon Prime since it's an exclusive movie early in the morning without reading any reviews ahead of time, and maybe seeing a trailer once... I don't remember, but... No, I didn't. I did. I just forgot the chair. But I didn't think it'd be that hard to figure out what kind of movie it should be based on the title. A horror comedy. But it's unsure if it wants to be either so many times. This film is based on a novel of the same name by Grady Hendrix, the screenplay by Jenna Lamia, and directed by Damon Thomas. And that's about it, as I can say about the behind the scene people who worked on the movie without going into any more detail because I don't know. So with that said, what's the movie about? Set in 1988, the story is about two best friends, Abby, played by Elsie Fisher, and Gretchen, played by Amaya Miller, who have been best friends for as long as they can remember and get along all the time. But things change when Gretchen is going to be moving, but they don't let that ruin their movies. They plan to head to their other friend, Margaret's Lake House, for the weekend, including her, played by Rachel Ogechi Kanu, and Glee, played by Kathy Eng. The lake house is near a place where someone was murdered brutally, and later when Margaret's sleazy boyfriend Wallace, played by Clayton Royal Johnson, shows up and gives him drugs, I mean Gretchen go to the abandoned house near the lake house, and what falls is Gretchen becomes possessed. As you do. Which, if the movie wasn't literally called My Best Friend's Exorcism, I might say that'd be a spoiler, but it's not, although I will have more to say about this later. Anyways, until Abby realizes what the audience already knows by this point, because, you know, it's called, an, it has exorcism in the title, she sees how strange and different Gretchen is acting, with their friendship being tested, so she'll have to race after the non-existent clock to save her. I'd only seen parts of Jennifer's body. That came out wrong. i only seen parts of the movie Jennifer's body. You know, not Jennifer fake last name for the sake of this joke, which I'm pretty sure has a similar price, but I'm not going to compare and contrast uh, Jennifer's body with my best friend's exorcism, because I don't care. I also never read the novel, so I'm judging this movie as its own thing, and I think the movie is bad. I really like and appreciate many things about the movie. One, the look of the film being from the 1980s, which at first when they referenced Boy George, I didn't know if this movie was going to be a bit too try-hard, but it's not really reference heavy. I don't remember if they did do that much afterwards. But pl Plus, the sets and locations are nice. The costumes, the hair was hair mist. Like Sometimes it felt like wigs, and sometimes it, I think it was real, I'm not sure. But it was a nice looking movie. That is until the special effects come in, but I'll get into that later. Anyways, the other things I have to praise are the main stars, uh, Elsie Fisher and Amaya Miller's performers, performances, because they have good chemistry. Uh, they are believable as good friends that go back far and are generally likable, and make their characters more interesting with their charm and performances. That's about it, because this movie had so much going for it, but it does so many things wrong. I really wanted to like it, but it's the little things, and by little things, I mean many little things they get wrong. To start off with, the tone of the movie. This is an R-rated horror comedy movie, but it's not sure if it should be a horror film or a comedy in many scenes. Plus, it doesn't deserve an R rating. Like, maybe there might be blood on the floor, but if they curse us, I, this could easily pass for a PG-13. But the rating, I wouldn't... I won't carry on about that. 
Uh, but back to the tone, though, the movie isn't a can't be throwback to be movies nor a comedic take on The Exorcist. It feels like it wants to take itself seriously so many times, since the comedic timing is off in almost every scene it's in. I laughed maybe a few times, but I didn't know when I was supposed to laugh. Like, there's a scene where Gretchen is just barfing out, but the music plays it off straight. And then in another scene, she takes a dump in the trash can in the classroom in front of everyone. But every other scene is played as straight, so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to find it. Funny about this, there's this character of Christopher Lyle plays who played off who's played as a dumb character who gives both important information to Abby about her friend, and it's very inconsistent because, you know, he talks about being so stupid, like, uh, I'm not respected as much as my other brothers, and you know, following up with like, you know, his experiences with his mom and uh, you know I don't know. It's like, um, you know, he goes back to immediately making more jokes, like, nah, I don't have to think about the tragedies of my life. Ah, I'm so stupid. It's like that. I guess I should probably have, uh, wrote down what he said to quote, but uh, that required me remembering this movie at all. The horror elements are also bad, due to bad editing choices. Like, there's this scene early on where the four are using the Ouija board at the lake house, and hear a noise in the closet, but while they are looking... the Looking, the planchette moves on its own, but Wallace comes out of the closet for an obvious fake out when the planchette ends on a letter that completes the word they were trying to get out when they were using the Ouija board. Would it be more ominous if they didn't show the piece moving while doing this fake out since that ruins the suspense if, oh man, maybe this is or isn't actually something supernatural going on? Because it's like, if that thing's moving, I, I already know something supernatural is going on, so this fake out is honestly, you know, underwhelming. So yeah, it would have made more sense if, you know, he did the jump scare force, and then, you know, tilt the camera down to us for us to see it say the final word. While the uh, main characters aren't looking, I think that would make much more sense, but what do I know? By the way, this Wallace character, he's set up to, like, be kind of like a major part of the story. Like, it feels like he should play a bigger part, and halfway through, he's just gone from the movie. Like... What happened? It feels like there should have been an important scene about him, but, you know, he's gone. Like, I can't explain further because spoilers or whatever, but, you know, eh. Anyways, what else is there? Uh, oh, also, after, like, an hour in, there are obvious voiceover lines that they had to add in almost as if they forgot the last minute to explain in between scenes a few choices when I think it would have been able to, I would have been able to put two and two together on my own without them. Also, it's obvious it was ad and post and feels unnatural. Speaking of the unnatural, the effects are awful. Terrible CGI, like a scene where it cuts from the CGI object to a physical prop when a dog bites it and how obvious it looks that they cut in between the shots. And worst of all I got from this movie was a script that if they made one, one huge change, it could have elevated the whole film. You want to know what that was? The movie would have been so much better if instead of Gretchen being the one that's possessed, have it be Abby. Gretchen is not only movie, but she's hotter and richer than Abby, who's at their school on a scholarship and worried about her looks. And while I'm glad this movie avoids a bully character cliche, Sort of. Uh, both seem to be finding their own friend group. Here's honestly what I would do with the movie. Okay, here's what I would do with the movie. Uh, to make it way more interesting and also good. So Gretchen and Abby might both be in the popular clique, but Abby is only in because of Gretchen with the other people in the group talking behind their backs and looking down on Abby. And, and with Gretchen moving, Abby feels worried she'll be alone. So if Abby got possessed, Gretchen would have to face if the rumors of Abby being not who she thought she was, true or false, worrying about playing against stereotypes. Gretchen's family is apparently very religious, so maybe they also look down on Abby due to her class or being bigots because she's Jewish. I don't know. They do nothing with religion, with religion in the movie, even though she's Gretchen has many things around her house showing that her family is very religious. So you know, whatever. I mean, it's a movie about exorcism. When has that ever mattered about religion in the movie? Ugh. And you know, there was a scene in the movie where it just made me lose it. Well, not lose it, just made me lose. Interest because they're the friendship in this movie is ruined when during the scene they split up as friends Abby is the one who calls it off instead of Gretchen because her devotion to saving her best friend Doesn't feel earned after that like because Gretchen should have been the one to break it off and Abby having to show how strong her friendship is Would not do it like in context. It might be eh, Like I don't want to misquote anything or paraphrase cuz but I think you could get my point the movie isn't Terrible. 
it's not good in any way. It's far from good. Uh, it's it can crawl its way to being good. I mean, it could be good, but you know, the people who made it couldn't let it crawl its way to being good. What I'm trying to say is, it looks great at times, but can feel cheap. The tone is constantly unsure of what it wants to be, and it isn't particularly good at either genre. The characters are inconsistent, the ending is a mixed bag, and if they really wanted to do something new with this movie about exorcism, they either needed to choose one tone by going over the top as a comedy, or either play straight, and I'm not saying it can't be both. I've seen good comedic horror films, but this movie isn't a good example because it feels it's unaware of what kind of movie it should be. The movie wasn't boring or insufferable. I would understand people who would like the movie. Again, Elsie Fisher and Amaya Miller have good friendship chemistry and could have been utilized in a much better movie. But among even more problems I didn't even mention, this movie is fine if you keep your expectations very, very low, and maybe it will either will or will not work for you. But for me, I think a demon might have to possess me to watch it again anytime soon. I give my best friend's exorcism a 4 out of 10.